Praise the Lord. Give Jesus a hand clap this morning. I'm honored to be here, honored to serve in this place. Uh, yes, and if you came looking for a young, good-looking pastor this morning, you found him. Amen. I say that every time I get up here. Anyway, good morning, good morning. Love you guys. We're going we're gonna to dive right in. Um, I just thank God. This is a great place. And, um, you know, I've preached in a lot of places. And uh, when a pastor gives up his pulpit, it, it means a lot. And uh, I thank God for Pastor Brian and Pastor Megan, what they mean to us. He's gone. He always leaves when I preach. No, he doesn't. Anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, I thank God for him. Come on, give it up for your pastor this morning. Praise the Lord. We love uh, Brian because of Carter Grace, and um, we love Megan because she birthed Carter Grace, and uh, so, and we love all of our grandchildren, but Carter Grace, you know, she's just kind of the, she's the, kind of the icon of the house around here, so we thank God for, for her, and what can I say about you guys? I want to say a lot. I want to say thank you for who you are. I want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of this house, and uh, you know, I think this house is coming into its own. I'm very excited about what I'm seeing in staff, uh, all of these young people that, that took some of us, uh, some of us, uh, more mature saints place in this house. They're coming into their own, aren't they? Do you see that? Uh, I hear a lot of pastoral language in Brian's preaching now. Uh, you know, all that stuff he says about he's not going to text you back and all that stuff. It's just, it's, he's just showing off. So don't... Uh, he will text you back. It might be three days later, but you will get a text from him. Uh, that, but it, the point is, you know, I just love what I'm seeing, and I love uh, what I'm seeing these guys do around here. And the changes have been absolutely phenomenal, and we thank God for that. So I'd, I'd like to read a couple of verses, and as I do that, I want you to stand up. I'm going to have the pleasure and the privilege of introducing the Christmas series to you this morning, which I love to do. Uh, and the precursor is, this is introductory, and anytime Pastor Brian will tell you, and if those of you who've ever preached before, when you're introducing something, you normally start with the simple parts, because, uh, but this, it is the simple parts that, that actually are the foundation of what we, what we build upon. So in the next few weeks, we are going to build upon today's message. What you're underneath your feet right now is something called a foundation. It doesn't look very important. But it, it holds up everything in this room. And in your own personal life, you will only fall to the, to the depth and strength of your foundation. If your foundation is strong, when the house crumbles, it will all land right there. If the foundation of your spiritual life is str strong, you will only fall that far. Come on, somebody. And so sometimes it's the simple things that matter. And I think that we live in an age and a time, and social media has even helped the reality that what looks peripheral seems to be more important. I'll leave it there for a minute. And what um, sometimes the eye can see, even the Bible says that it's the inward parts that are most important, the parts you cannot see. And that's so true about us. So let, this morning, I'm going to give you some things that you know. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to see it, and it's going to be simple. And uh, the precursor is it's going to sound simple, but it's going to be exper experientially difficult. Okay? So, in other words, it sounds simple. We all know that love your neighbor is easy, right? Till you got the psycho next door, right? <laughs> so, love your neighbor easy. That's easy. I can do Oh, I can do that. Yeah, till you get the psycho, right? And then it's experientially difficult. Right, even though it sounds simple, you know it's like uh, love your wife as Christ loves the church. Amen. Come on, <laughs> don't go there. Anyway, so it sounds simple, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll say it this way: love your spouse, right? And that sounds simple, but experientially, that's not. Some days, that's not easy, right? Don't don't hug your neighbor. But anyway, all right. So, we thank God for that. So, let's, let's open up our hearts this morning. We're going to read Matthew 1, 20, and 21, and uh, we'll see where the Holy Spirit takes this. But while he thought about these things, behold, this is, a, this is an angel. This is an angel talking to Joseph. Beh but, while, but while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. 
Next verse. And she will bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus. Everybody say that with me. Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. So we're going to talk about the Savior this morning and what that absolutely means to us. Will you bow your heads as I pray? God, Father, thank you in the name of Jesus for your presence. Thank you for your anointing that breaks every yoke. Thank you that I am the Lord's messenger in the Lord's message this morning. And God, I praise you that you would give us ears to hear. Will you pray that over yourself? Say, Lord, give me ears to hear. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. 22 days from now, we're going to celebrate uh, Christmas, which is the most popular holiday in the entire world. More than 2 billion in over 160 countries will consider Christmas, considers Christmas to be the most important date of and day of the year. 61 regions of the world will celebrate Christ Christmas. 93% of Americans report celebrating Christmas, and 73% say that Christmas has a religious or spiritual connotation to them. Christmas is primarily celebrated through the giving of gifts. Everybody say giving. 59% of us say that gift givers say that giving gifts to others because they give gift to others because of the goodness of God. In other words, the reason that we give gifts is because God's been good to us. I pray that's your motive for giving gifts. I pray you don't give gifts to get them. It's like giving God worship so you can have something back, right? That's not the motive of why we're here. God isn't good for just what he gives, right? You know, that money can buy what God gives a lot of times. Money, money can't really buy the real things that God gives. But the, some things that God gives you, uh, if I give Charlotte a necklace, money can buy that. If I give Charlotte certain gifts, money can buy that. And money can buy what he gives, but you know what money can't buy is what he takes away. And that's so important for us to understand that what God can take away from us is what makes him so awesome. Money can't buy what he took from me. Money can't buy the, the sin that he took from me because he takes away the sin of the world. Amen. And that includes you and that includes me. Money can't buy that. Money can't take. Money can't replace. Money can't buy the, the peace he brings or the joy that he has brought my way. Money can't take. He took my belief. He money, money can't take bitterness from me, right? Money and, and a bribe only makes you harder, right? So money, you can't bribe somebody. But do you know what? When God comes in and takes away the sin of the world, when God does what he does with our sin, he changes everything about us because you and I become a new creation in Christ Jesus. There are, there are true gifts that Jesus gave at Christmas that only, only the true gifts of him can bring that will actually, actually satisfy I remember the time Sean and I bought our new, we, we bought a new Tahoe. We put it in the garage. And, man, it was a, it was a nice Tahoe. And, and um, it, we were living in, in our house in Kilgore. And on the night we got it, we were sitting in the living room. And I said, hey, let's just get up and go out in the garage and look and turn on the light and look at our new Tahoe. So we went out together, you know, and, we, of course, we're giving. We, we thank God for what he gives us, and it's awesome. And we went out and looked at the Tahoe together, and we went back in and watched her Hallmark movie. And um, in the process of all that, but you know what happened? We did that one time. One time. You know why? Because the things of this world never satisfy. And the things of this world were never Meant to satisfy. The reason you can't get no satisfaction <laughs> is because you ain't supposed to have any earthly satisfaction. God never created something for you that's better than Him, that's greater than Him. He never did, and He never created anything. Money cannot substitute what God can bring, and you will never be able to buy what comes from Him. Every the best Christmas. That we ever have is the true gifts that come from the true Christmas. That come from the Savior. Now, after this slide, here's the, the slide says, everything that God created gives. 
everything that God created gives. The moon gives, the sun gives, the stars give, the, the, the rivers give, the waters give, every birds, give, everybody gives. Everything God created gives. And once you meet Jesus as a human being, we're, very, we're great at taking before we come to Christ. We're great at giving when we come to meet him. We come to know him, right? Because everything that like clouds give, everything that God created gives. God is a giver. For God so loved the world that he, what? Gave. His only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him, would not perish, but have everlasting life. He gave us. You know what? Christmas brings gift that perish, right? But what did he get? He says that he would believe in him would perish, that believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. So what God gave you and me cannot be taken, cannot be stolen, will never perish, will never fade away, will never fade out. It is an eternal gift that God gave us. He gave us Jesus, the Son of God, as a gift. He gave us grace as a gift. He gave us the gift of righteousness as a gift. He gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit as a gift. And the devil can't take none of that away from you. You will have that eternally, and you will have that forever. Also, what he did to us, the true gifts of God, are, are they're totally imperishable. Here's what the Bible says. Labor not for stuff that perishes but for that which, with that which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give unto you. In other words, God says, don't labor for stuff. Toil. It's the word toil. It's the same word that, that, that Adam was given when he, before Adam, when Adam, after the curse, Adam had to toil. In other words, he had to earn from the fruit of the ground. He had to earn. We, 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 we actually, we would rather earn than receive free. Anybody in here got problems with free? No, 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 yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You do. You, more than you realize. Here's why. Because you would rather pay for it sometimes than God just give it to you. Now, you may, you think, well, I like free stuff. Well, you, except when it comes to the stuff that you try to earn, like God's goodness. The story's told of a little girl. I've told this story for 35 plus years. Brian will know the story, but she was giving neighborhood rides in her wagon, six years old, for free, and nobody would ride. And her mama said, well, honey, all you got to do is charge a quarter because some people want to contribute because they don't know how to receive for free. And she started charging 25 cents. And she had a great little job going because we don't know how to receive for free. And we also don't have the revelation that Jesus took away our sin. We are actually so sin conscious that we forget who we are in Christ. The body of Christ is very sin conscious. We, are, we really need to switch that consciousness from a sin consciousness to a righteousness consciousness of who you are in Christ Jesus. Because the greatest two things that you have to learn and know is that he irrevocably loves you. Amen. And you have to know who you are in Christ Jesus. Because, if, listen, if we, you keep looking for the sin in your life to show up, it's going to show up. But if you, if, you, if, you start, if you start seeing yourself as who you are in Christ Jesus, that he took away your sin. See, Jesus says stuff like he destroyed sin in the flesh. Jesus says stuff like I condemned sin in the flesh. The problem with us is, and this is a, we'll go to a little Bible study here, but the problem with us is we are more consciousness of the sin that's trying to get us than we are of the righteousness that has us. So we identify ourselves as, you know, and I know, and I, you, some of you might get mad at this, but you, you see yourself as a sinner saved by grace. God calls you something different. You are that but the word saved there in the plural is you are saved. 
And some of you talk about the old man. The old man came up. The old man came up. Listen, the old man is dead. And the new man is not a new you. The new man in you is Christ in you, not you new. Let me help somebody over here. See, because you have a, see, we have a, the Bible just defines these terms for us that the old man or the, the, there's an outward man. That outward man is your body. That is your body. That's who you are in body. That's the outward man. The inward man is being renewed day by day. Let me tell you how you can judge how well your inward man is doing by how bad your outward man is going. Because the older you get and the uglier you get on the outside, the better you look on the inside. Because the inward man is being renewed day by day by day by day. The outward man is decay, decay, and going away. And as you are going away, the inward man is becoming stronger every day. So look in the mirror and go, hey, inward man, you looking good today. Come on, somebody. Define who you are. Define what you are. There is an inward man. There is a new man. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Come on, say that with me. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old man of sin is dead. Jesus said he condemned sin in the flesh. Are you hearing? You guys are Presbyterians today. Believe me. What he and it's not what he it's not what he can give. It is what he exchanged. He exchanged beauty for ashes, strength for fear, gladness for your mourning, and peace for despair. He gave you joy unspeakable and full of glory. You can't buy joy. You can buy temporary joy. You can't buy eternal joy. But God can give you eternal joy, and no matter what's going on on the outside and going on around you, you can still have joy going on inside of you. We don't walk by sight. We walk by the Spirit. We walk by faith, by what we know is coming and who we are. And when Jesus said he condemned sin in the flesh, if that building outside is condemned, what does it mean for you when you walk up to that building? And it says condemned on it. It basically means don't go in there. When Jesus said I condemned sin in the flesh, he's saying don't go in there. So it's what he exchanged. He destroyed sin in the flesh. He exchanged your filthy garments for a robe of righteousness. Hebrews 5 tells us that because we do not understand righteousness, that we cannot grow into the new man. It's a great verse, by the way. It basically says that we are not aware of, of the gift of righteousness. This is, where, this is where your true maturity comes in. Because listen, if you keep seeing yourself as something besides what God sees you as, you will stay that person. And when you sin, when you know you shouldn't, then what happens is that you have, there's a new sheriff in town, by the way. His, his name, the master inside of you now is called righteousness. Are you hearing me? The Bible says you were once a slave to sin, but now you are a slave under righteousness. Most of you think you're condemned because of the sin that you have actually done. But what God is doing is trying to convince you of the righteousness that he wants you to do. The battle is not for what you've done. The battle is for what he wants you to be. And what he wants you to see yourself as. That's the gift of Christmas. The gift of Christmas is I'm taking away your filthy rags. I'm taking away all that stuff. I'm taking away the way you see yourself. I'm taking away that bitterness. I'm taking away that agony. I'm taking away that pornography. I'm taking all that stuff away from you, and I'm putting on you a robe of righteousness. Now I want you to start seeing yourself clothed in my clothing, my garments. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and put off the deeds of 
the flesh. Now let's look at the let's look at the next slide and, and grab this as a, just a concept for yourself. He did not spare he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Say that's me. That's he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And you're worried about your water bill. Or you're worried about your Christmas. Which you really should shift. There's a way to do Christmas right. There's a way to do it wrong. And if you're going to do it according to the world, you're going to do it wrong. And if you're doing it to please others, you're doing it wrong. If you're doing it to get appreciation, you're doing it wrong. If you're doing it to give gifts, you're doing it wrong. If you're doing it to make yourself feel better about yourself, you're doing it wrong. If you're spoiling your kids too much, you're doing it wrong. Are you hearing me? We did Christmas just like this. One gift you want. One gift you need. One surprise. That's it. One gift you want, one gift you need, one surprise. That's it. That's all they expected because Christmas was never about gifts. It was never about what we could give. It was about what we had had. It was about the birthday of the King of Kings. It wasn't my birthday. You don't owe me no underwear and you don't owe me no socks. You don't owe me a shirt that's too big or you don't owe me a hand-me-down that you got from your cousin last year and you didn't use it all year. No, you don't owe me any of that. It is about Jesus first and foremost. He is the king of kings. It is his birthday and not my birthday. And I'm here to celebrate him and not celebrate me. Gosh, you Baptist. Mm, Anyway. God says if he'd give my son what we withhold from you. Jesus answered this and said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. 2 Corinthians 9.15 labels, labels Jesus as the indescribable gift. God is indescribable in every way. If you can describe how he is, you know and I know that our words cannot describe his goodness And when we sing holy, 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 or when we sing the Lord is good, and we sing God is good, we can sing it over and over and over and over because we don't have words to express the goodness of the Lord. We don't have words to express. We don't have enough words to praise him. That's why we we use every, we exhaust ourselves trying to worship him. That's why we're addicted to worship and getting in his presence because we just want to say it because we don't know how to say it enough and our spirit just wants to say it more and more and more. And this is what the true gift of Christmas is all about. Amen. He's indescribable. We do not have the vocabulary. Now I'm going to let you have a, I'm going to have us to participate in just a minute. I want to participate together. I'm going to count to three. I'm going to count to three in about five seconds. And in, when I count to three, I want you to scream out. Say scream. scream. Who Jesus is to you. I'm going to give you, I'm going to set you up for those of you who are a little slow. Okay. Who is Jesus to you? I'm going to set you up for those who are shy. Who is Jesus to you? I'm going to set you up for those who think I'm stupid. I want you to shout, who is Jesus to you? Now, there's three or four words that I I could say right off my heart who he is to me. But I think he wants to hear from you this morning. Don't look at your neighbor. Look straight up to the heaven. And one, two... Three, say to him what he is to you. That ain't enough. Come on, say it again. Give me five words. Give me five words. Come on, five words, five words. Father, Redeemer, Savior, King. Mary, you ain't saying nothing. Now, how many of you exhausted yourself with who he was to you? Can you, Mike, just say something you didn't say already. Say another word. I, uh, thank you, Luann, but I was talking to everybody. <laughs> this is not parrot church. This is participation. All right. Give it, say a word you didn't say. 
Say another one. Now, can you say more? Mitch said everything. That ain't fair, Mitch. <laughs> okay. But in other words, we don't have enough words to thank him. If Brian gives me a gift for Christmas, and I, not that I need one, but it better be good. But if he gives me a gift for Christmas, you are my gift. Yeah, that's been, that's been true all my life. <laughs> but anyway, so... Brian said, I am your gift. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking you off my taxes again. But anyway, so here we go. If Brian gives me a gift, I'm going to be able to describe that gift. Most of the time, well, I may not from the generations we live in describe it, but I'll try to describe it. But my point is, I'm going to be able to describe it. I'm going to be able to describe his heart. I know him. But you know what? God gives us gifts that are just indescribable. We cannot describe, and, and, and where the tributaries take us to praise. When he saved you, you, you can't put into words what happened to you, how everything in your whole life changed. Your perspective changed. The way you viewed life changed. The way the, the people you ran with changed. The, where you went changed. Everything about you changed. Next slide. It says this. Watch. Hallelujah. He says, and that's the wrong one. Give me. <laughs> For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. This is what the first Christmas provided for you. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You know, my humanity still shows up and so does yours. And God says, I love you so much and you are worth so much that I will die for you. But you know, have you ever, have you ever received a gift and felt obligated my spiritual son last year came to our house. Anson Anthros came to our house from Austin, and he walked in the door, and and he they had Christmas gifts for me in Charlotte. And immediately, I was like, "Oh my gosh! I don't have a gift for him. I haven't even thought about a gift for him. I don't even want not know him." <laughs> but what happened? All of a sudden, because. He brought me something. I moved into obligation that I should give him something. I went from, and my spiritual son, he doesn't want nothing from me. Fact is, he would rather give to me than for me to give anything to him. But because of works... I, I, let me earn your gift. Let me give you more back than you gave me. That's not what he wants. This, listen, this is not what God wants. God never wants your obligatory worship. He doesn't want that. He wants you. Because he knows if he has you, that when you worship, it won't be an obligation. And because he gave you, he says it's free. It was the gift of God. You're saved by grace through faith, through the fact that you believe that he can do what he says he can do and that he will do what he said he will do. I heard a story about a large family who went to dinner together. And they went to a Mexican restaurant, and there was a, a, like, like 25 of them. And there was no one discussed tickets, and so they were all ordering uh, queso and dip and guacamole and, and like, like appetizers and they all ordered drinks, not alcohol, but they ordered all ordered sodas, which is just as much as alcohol nowadays. And said, so they ordered sodas and then they all ordered dessert. And so all of a sudden, you know, they have a great time, a great meal, and that lady brings the ticket. And so when they bring the ticket, they started arguing. About how much, well, I only ate two pieces of calamari, right? And I, I shouldn't have to pay for that. 
because I only dipped in the guacamole one time. And so they were just, all of a sudden, there was this obligation that came. And while they were arguing, one of the senior, mature, rich people took the ticket, handed the credit card to the lady, and they paid the bill. And they kept arguing about how much they ate, how much they didn't eat, what they ordered, what they didn't order. And how much, and the chintzy ones, of course, are wanting to get off of paying nothing. And all of a sudden, they're standing there arguing, and they bring back the bill, and the man leaves the tips, and he pays off everything, and the man's wife says, Hey! You don't owe nothing. It's paid in full. Now what happens? The conversation goes to who paid the bill. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> See, our convert it's not what we owe. It's who paid the bill. You don't owe anything. It's not, it's not what you owe, and you're not obligated. Are you hearing me? But because of the love that's in you, because he gave you and made you a new creation, because you are a son and daughter of the most high God, you don't have to work for him because you're going to work from him. And you're going to work because you love him. It is the son and the daughter that does the best work. Are you hearing me? Why? Because they are the children of God. You don't have to encourage, you don't have to beg them to tithe. You don't have to beg them to give. You don't have to beg them to worship. You don't have to beg them to sow. You don't have to beg them to show up. They're sons and daughters. They have been adopted by Abba Father. And they show up because every sin is paid for. And when they worship, they worship in spirit and in truth because every sin is paid for. We don't remember our sins. We remember the exchange. You took that from me. Jesus, come on, that's better than that. Mm. Mm. What a gift. You know, if, you know, if I said you were in eternal prison, you know, I'm not really ready for you, but, <laughs> but I'm playing. <laughs> I love you <laughs> a bunch, but I want to preach longer. <laughs> okay, I can't, uh, I can't tell that story. All right, give me slide nine. Let me give you a little scripture. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> I meant that as a compliment. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? Let me read it again because Alondra stole my thunder. But anyway, so, so when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin. Amen. Is the Bible a liar? Or are you more wrapped up in your experience than you are your truth? Yeah. Having been set free. Free from sin. It doesn't mean you don't sin. It means when you sin, you don't want to. And when you sin, you don't keep on sinning. It means that when you sin, immediately the master of righteousness that lives inside of you, because you're not a slave to sin anymore, you're a slave to righteousness. So that slave master is drawing you back to righteousness and pulling you away from the sin. See, when the enemy pulls, he, pull, he, he, he deceives you. What do you do? He pulls you over here by yourself and reminds you of who you are, convinces you of what you're not. And then when you do sin, the, the Holy Spirit says, whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. I'm going to pull you back over here. Come on, bro. Come on, sister. Come on, get over here with me. I'm your slave now. You're not a slave to that. But the gift of God, is, that, is this the same slide I was on? Did you change that? But now having, thank you, but ha, now having been set free from sin, now give it to me, thank you, and having become slaves, can you see this language? Can you see this language? 
See, do you see yourself as a slave to God or a slave to your old man or a slave to your old nature? And wives, I wasn't talking to you naturally, not a slave to your old man. I'm talking about your old man nature, okay? Having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end, everlasting life. Remember, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who shall believe in him was not here but have ever lasting life for God so loved the world he gave his son his son gave you everlasting life everlasting life is a gift of the first Christmas but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord next slide but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord we just said that but watch this Romans 5 8 declares But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners. He kept you before you were kept. He guarded you when you didn't even want to be guarded. And it was free. He kept me and you for himself when we didn't even want to be kept. We weren't even thinking about him. We were shooting, doping, smoking, drinking, partying, running, sexing, all that. We weren't thinking about him. He's like, uh, uh, protect that one. Yeah, put angels around that one. Yeah, he's going home. He's going to have a wreck, but he's not going to get hurt. Yeah, uh, uh, that wreck is just to get his attention, but he'll be... Keep him, keep him, keep him, keep him, keep him, keep him. They're mine. Protects you when you didn't even want to be protected. I was doing 85 miles an hour in my Corvette, going down to Highway 259 on Estes Parkway, 4 o'clock in the morning. I sleep at the wheel. I sleep, 4 a.m., out of my mind. 85 miles an hour. And all of a sudden, I wake up. I wake up and turn my wheel. And when I did, there was a metal pole right in front of me that would have cut my Corvette in half. He kept me when I couldn't keep myself. He reserved me for him. Because he had an eternal that, that that he because he had an eternal plan for me and for you. And let me let me finish with this. Next slide will help us. And this is where it comes back to you. That if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you see the two things there? Confess with your mouth. Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be sozoed. You will be saved. Next slide. Next slide. Whoever is a believer in Christ Jesus is a new creation. The old way of living has disappeared. A new way of living has come into existence. When you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart this is how you become saved it is the word delivered the word salvation is the word deliverance it's the word sozo it means delivered it means helped it means salvation but in in word in the word deliverance there who do you get delivered from first and foremost from Satan and secondly from yourself because what happens is the old is passed away. You become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Give me the next slide and let me help you one more time. He says, Galatians 2, 20 says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. i got to let you go. I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. My old self has been crucified with Christ. Stop relying on upon the excuse that the old man raised up in me today. He is dead. The truth is, he's dead, and the problem is, it's you. 
Stop blaming the old man when it's you choosing in the, it's the flesh. It's the nature of the flesh because, listen to me, you can't have it both ways. You can't have a new man and an old man. You can't have both. Are you hearing me? God says what you are. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. All things become new. And again, the old man is dead. The outward man is the body. And the inward man is not a new you. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, let me say something, that, and I'll finish. And I've said this before, and my wife hates it, but I'm going to say it anyway. I hate WWJD. What would Jesus do? The reason that I hate what would Jesus do is because anybody can do that, born again or not. Because Christianity is not a behavior. Christianity is not a, a free choice. You gave up your choice when you became a new creature in Christ Jesus. Your choices passed away. You became a follower of Christ. Quit looking at the clock, Charlotte. WWJD. What would Jesus do? A parent can ask, what would Jesus do? That's not the point. You're crucified with Christ. You are no longer alive. You don't ask that. You ask one thing. What do I need to surrender so he can live through me? Because he lives inside of you, and he wants to live through you. He don't want to live what would. And listen, by the way, let me help you one more time. You don't become him. You become as him. Why? Because it is him when he lives through you. Don't ask, what would Jesus do? Ask, what is Jesus doing inside of me right now? And what does his word say? Because I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. My sins are passed away. My flesh is condemned. I am no longer a sinner. I am born again by the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus now lives inside of me. So here's the point. If you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. I want you to stand. I want the pair of partners to come. Pair of partners come. And I hope this. My hope is this. Some of you are living like an old man. Some of you are living like your old man. Some of you are living like you used to live. And Christ is in your life, but Christ is not your life. And I'll say this that I've said for 40 years. Some of you put your life in Christ, and some of you put Christ in your life. And God wants you to put your life in Christ, not just put Christ in your life. Jesus is not a token or a, or a bobble dog or whatever the a bobblehead whatever they call him what's they call it the bobblehead doll he's not that he is your savior and some of you are living according to an old identity or living halfway into what God's called you to be and who you know you are and you've allowed certain things to come back in your life and you've blamed it on the fact that there's an old man or this is a struggle you have or this is just who I am no, God tells you who you are. You, have, you do not have the right to define who you are. You have the right to say what the Word says about you. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus, and God wants you to live that way powerfully, wonderfully, expectantly, awesomely, letting Jesus live His life inside of you and through you. And that's what I want for you. And these prayer partners are here this morning to pray with you. Those of you who say, you know what? I need to repent. I need to accept Christ back into my life in the fullness of who he is. I also need to repent for the identity I put over my own life. I also want to repent for making my circumstances and my pains more powerful than the word of God. I also, I'm going to say it again, want to repent for making my circumstances and my pain more powerful than the word of God and the definition of who he says I am. 
So this altar is open for you to receive prayer. Receive Christ. Repent of your sins. And step into the identity of who you are in Christ Jesus. Jesus has came and saved you from your sins. Jesus has came and saved you from your sins. And the first Christmas brought that to you. Come and get one. Come and get. Come and receive what is yours this morning. God, we glorify you and magnify you. Thank you for this service. Thank you for your hand upon these people. It is in your name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Will you give the Lord a hand clap?